guys, it's Morgan, and today I'm going to be talking about the first five episodes of season one of the show Scream Queens. Now, if you haven't seen Scream Queens before and you think you might want to, you might want to stop watching now because I will be spoiling episodes one, two, three, four, and five. If you don't care, keep watching. Episode one starts in 1995, where a Kappa pledge just gave birth in a bathtub. Her sisters, except one, don't really care about what she's going through and go downstairs to dance. When they come back up, the girl's dead. In present day, Emma Roberts plays Chanel, the president of the Cap House, along with her minions, Chanel No. 2, played by Ariana Grande, Chanel No. 3, played by Billy Lloyd, and Chanel No. 5, played by Abigail Breslin. Dean Kathy Munch, played by Jamie Lee Curtis, tells Chanel that she wants to get rid of Cap House. But then Gigi, played by Nazim Padrid, comes into the Dean's office and tells the Dean that she can't get rid of Cap House, but that she has an idea. Kappa has to accept all of its pledges. Grace, played by Skylar Samuels, wants to join Kappa to feel closer to her dead mother. And she convinces her roommate Sade, played by Kiki Palmer, to join with her. The other pledges are Hester, played by Leah Michelle, Sam, Tiffany, and Jennifer. Chanel wants to scare the pledges away, so she makes a plan with the housekeeper, Miss Bean, and says she's going to pretend to put Miss Bean's face in the fryer. When she does this, the fryer is on, and Miss Bean dies. Grace wants to go to the police, but Chanel gets all the girls, except Zayde, to back her up and say that Grace did it if Grace turns her in and then they hide the body in the freezer. Grace is about to tell Pete, played by Diego Bonita, about what happened to Miss Bean, but Pete tells her that he saw them. The two of them go to the freezer to look at the body, and then realize that Chanel and her boyfriend Chad are coming, and they hide, and Chanel and Chad realize that the body is missing. Chanel number two decides that she wants to go home. While she's packing, however, the Red Devil appears, and through texting her, it tells her that he slash she, because at this point we don't know if it's a guy or a girl, is going to kill her. Chanel number two tries to tweet out that she's being killed by the Red Devil, but she gets killed before she can send the tweet. Then she wakes up, sends a tweet, and dies again. Chanel number three and Chanel number five bury the pledges in the yard. While they're there, the Red Devil appears mowing the lawn. All the girls start screaming, except Tiffany, because she's dead, and she thinks they're singing Taylor Swift, and then she gets her head cut off. In episode two, Chanel, Chanel number three, Chanel number five, and Hester hide Chanel number two's body in the freezer, and Hester tells them that she'll keep it a secret. Grace finds a mysterious locked door in the basement, but Chanel number five finds her and tells her that only Chanel has the key to the door. Grace and Pete decide they want to find out why all these murders are happening. So Pete sneaks into the Dean's office and Grace sneaks into the locked room. While there, Chanel finds Grace and tells her the story of the girl in the bathtub who gave birth and then died. Grace wonders what happened to the baby. Chanel breaks up with her boyfriend Chad, but then feels bad about it and goes to apologize. Then she catches Chad with his best friend Boone played by Nick Jonas, in bed together. She thinks Chad is gay, but Chad tells her that Boone is gay. And Boone tells her that he wants to come out on his own and then join Kappa, and Chantelle agrees, to the disappointment of Chantelle number five. Pete tells Grace he found a list of names of girls that could have been there on the night of the bathtub baby. Grace opens Pete's closet and sees the Red Devil costume. Pete tells her he's the mascot, but Grace thinks she, he's the killer and the baby, and leaves his room. Denise, played by Nikki Nash, is a security guard chosen to protect Cap House. She hears screaming and runs into the house, and Chanel says that the Red Devil attacked her in her room. The girls go up to her room, but don't find anyone, but see a message that says, Sluts will die. Boone is killed by the Red Devil, but then at the end of the episode, it's revealed that he isn't dead, and is in fact working with the Red Devil. In episode three, Grace and Zayde are shopping in a supermarket, and they see who they think is the Red Devil, and Grace tasers him, 
but it turns out just to be a kid wearing the mascot costume. Chanel realizes that Chanel number no. two's body is missing, but Chanel number no. five tells her to deal with it on her own. Grace, Zayde, and Denise find blood in Chanel number no. two's room. They also see that she's still posting pictures on Instagram, even though it's pretty obvious that someone is just taking pictures of her dead body. They decide to go talk to Chanel No. 2's parents, and they tell them that Chanel No. 2 was also dating Chad. Grace finds out that her dad, Wes, is now one of her teachers. Wes shows his class the movie The Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Gigi starts to have feelings for Wes, which makes Dean Munch very jealous. Hester sneaks into Chanel's closet, but Chanel catches her and then decides to give her a makeover, making her Chanel No. 6 which really upsets Chanel No. 5. Chanel No. 3 tells Sam that her biological father is Charles Manson and that if anyone found out, they would think she was the killer. They agree to be each other's allies. The frat boys decide to go after the Red Devil in honor of Boone. While they're doing that, they realize there are two Red Devils. They try and fight them, but they lose. One of the frat boys even gets both of his arms sawed off. Denise accuses Zayde of being the killer because she found a chainsaw under Zayde's bed. Zayde tells her that her grandmother sent her the chainsaw for protection, and Denise lets her go. Grace and Pete decide to track down one of the old Kappa girls. Wes calls Grace to see where she is, and Grace lies to him and says she's at the library, when in reality she's at a gas station. The Red Devil attacks Gigi, Wes comes in to help her, and then the Red Devil disappears. Dean Munch shows up and asks what's going on. Wes accuses her of being the killer. Episode 4 starts off with Chanel giving gifts to her fans for Chanel-oween, making fun of the fact that Taylor Swift also gives gifts to her fans. Wes and Gigi try and get Dean Munch caught for being the killer, but the detective doesn't believe them. Grace and Pete visit a woman who was one of the girls that was involved in the bathtub baby incident. She tells them that Dean Munch had them bury the body of the girl, but they had hoods on so they didn't see where they were going. She then tells them that Dean Munch told them to leave school and to never contact each other again. She also tells them that the baby was a girl, and that puts a wrench in their theory because they thought the baby was Chad. Zayde tells the Kappa girls that she's going to run for president, which really upsets Chanel. She also decides she's going to have a haunted house as a fundraiser. As punishment for talking, the Red Devil shows up at the woman who used to be a Kappa's house and kills her. Hester and Chad meet up in a graveyard and talk about their shared obsession with death. Hester tells Chad that she wants everything that Chanel has, including him, and Chad enjoys it. Grace goes to talk to Wes and asks him if he lied to her about saying that her mother died in fire and asks him if she's the bathtub baby. Wes says she isn't, but Grace doesn't believe him. Grace and Pete meet up at the house at 53 Shady Lane. While they're there, they get surprised by Zayde and her friend Earl. Zayde says that she wants to hold her fundraiser here. Then Denise shows up. Pete and Denise tell the story of the old hag of Shady Lane, who used to live in the house. They say that the people in the town heard her wailing. Pete also tells Grace that it was the same year as the bathtub baby. Denise still thinks Zayde is one of the killers. But Zayde tells her that she's just jealous because Denise wanted to be a Kappa and was rejected. Chanel, Chanel number no. 3, Chanel number no. 5, and Hester beat up two boys in the lunchroom after they treat them like objects. And when they're done, everyone in the lunchroom claps for them. Hester and Chad end up at the old house on 53 Shady Lane, and they find the bodies of Miss Bean, Chanel number no. 2, Denise's security guard friend, and the woman who used to be a cat. They try and tell everyone not to go to the haunted house, but no one listens. Zayde calls the police to tell them about the dead bodies, but they don't believe her. And then she is kidnapped by the Red Devil. Grace tells Pete that they have to find out who the old hag of Shady Lane was, because it's possible she could have been taking care of the bathtub baby. It is then revealed to the audience that the old hag of Shady Lane was Gigi. In episode 5, Chanel, Chanel number no. 3, Chanel number no. 5, and Hester are planning for their fundraiser, a pumpkin patch. Chanel tells them that they're going to dress up as the wives of assassinated presidents. Chanel number no. 5 doesn't like her costume, but Chanel tells her that she can either wear her costume 
or leave. Dean Munch tells the Kappa girls and the frat boys that she is closing down the campus and that they can't have any parties. Chanel decides that she'll have her party on midnight on November 1st. Chanel number five is making toenail cookies for the children in the town because they always dress up in the Chanel outfits. Hester tells her that instead of going after the children, she should go after Chanel. Chanel number five and Hester talk to Jennifer and try and make her work with them to make sure Zayday wins the election. At first, Jennifer isn't in, but then Chanel number five shows Jennifer Chanel's collection of candles, which Jennifer is obsessed with since she's a candle vlogger, and Jennifer agrees. Chanel gets arrested for killing Miss Bean and sees Chanel number three, Chanel number five, Hester, and Jennifer, and thinks they turned her in. Zay Day is seen being kept in a hole in the Red Devil's lair. I thought this scene was kind of funny because when the Red Devil opened the trap door and looked down at Zay Day, they were carrying a puppy. So yeah, I'm a, I'm a very big, scary serial killer, but I like puppies. Okay. Grace and Pete want to find Zayday, but Hester says that if Zayday can escape from the serial killer, it will prove how great of a president she will be. Grace and Pete go to see Wes to ask him to help them look for Zayday. When they get there, they find him with Gigi. After being shocked, Grace asks them for their help, and they agree. Chanel starts making friends with the woman in her jail, and tells them that she doesn't think she's going to get bailed out. But then Chanel number three and Sam come and they bail her out. She calls her jail friends losers and leaves. I really like the little shout out they gave to Orange is the New Black in that scene, based on the costumes. Grace, Pete, Wes, and Gigi go to Dean Munch's office and ask her to help them find Zayday. Dean Munch tells them that she already asked Denise to look for Zayday. And since Denise thinks Zayday is the killer, it would only make her want to find Zayday faster. Hester and Jennifer lie to Chanel and tell her that it was Chanel number five that turned her in. Chanel number five tells Chanel that Hester is lying, but Chanel doesn't believe her, and tells her that as punishment, she has to get the pumpkin patch ready in the middle of the night with the killer on the loose. Chanel number five, along with her two boyfriends, Roger and Dodger, are lighting jack-o'-lanterns, and then the Red Devil shows up, and they run into the maze. Roger and Dodger tell Chanel number five that she has to choose one of them. She chooses Roger and leaves Dodger behind. While they're walking, Chanel number five realizes that the killer is just gonna follow her and Roger's footprints. So she tells Roger to walk backwards. Roger yells and tries to warn Dodger, but the killer finds him and Dodger is killed. When they get to the Red Devil's lair, Grace, Pete, and Wes go one way and Gigi and Denise go the other way. Grace, Pete, and Wes find the trap door where Zayday was being held, but she's not there. Denise and Gigi find what looks like to be a torture room. The Red Devil turns off the lights. Denise tries to tase the Red Devil, but accidentally tases Gigi. Then Gigi tases the Red Devil. Denise runs and tells Grace, Wes, and Pete what happened. But when they go back, the Red Devil's gone, and Gigi tells them that he got up, hit her with a bat, and escaped. Grace thanks Gigi for saving them, and tells her that if her dad has to serve Danny again, She's glad it's Gigi. Chanel wants to do the election early without Zayday so she can rig it. But before she can, Zayday appears and tells them that the Red Devil has a crush on her and she played along for a while but then stabbed the Red Devil's hand. At first Chanel doesn't believe her, but then Grace shows up and tells her Zayday is telling the truth. Late that night, Gigi is walking with the Red Devil and she tells him, or her, that an unknown male has to be killed. It is revealed then that Gigi is working with the Red Devil. As of now, we can safely say that Boone and Gigi are both on the Red Devil team. I wonder who Gigi wants killed. Maybe Wes? But she also told the Red Devil that she has a salad date and she went on one with Wes before. So, maybe Pete? Based on these five episodes, my prediction for now about who I think Red Devil is, or at least one of them, is Chanel number five. Because she cowers in front of Chanel, so I think it would be a really interesting twist if it turns out that she's some crazy killer. And also I think Abigail Breslin is really talented and it would be cool to see her play a crazy character. Well, 
Episode 6 airs tonight. We'll see what happens.